We thought it'd be worthwhile, uh, perhaps, uh, saying something for a few minutes about the Edinburgh School, perhaps trying to define what it is. And in art historical terms, I think that's not unimportant. It's a, it's a term that is used frequently to describe uh, an important aspect of 20th century Scottish painting. It clearly has its origins uh, with the Edinburgh College of Art, which was founded in 1909. And I suppose um, the first artists who are associated with it are that first uh, cohort of attendees, people like uh, Adam Bruce Thompson, Donald Moody, um, D.M. Sutherland. And then the next generation, of course, um, the figure of Gillis, uh, McTaggart, Johnny Maxwell, and Anne Redpath. Now, uh, a number of these artists, most of them, in fact, not only attended the College of Art, but then became tutors at the college. And this um, this continuation, this continuity uh, of student and then artist, diplomat and then lecturer, senior lecturer, um, gives a sort of uh, a very interesting profile to the Edinburgh School. Some people might want a broader definition which includes everybody that went to Edinburgh College of Art in the 20th century. I don't think that is uh, so valuable. It really is this first period of the, uh, into the 20s, the 30s, and then the 40s and 50s, so you're looking at perhaps three generations. The generation of Gillis is perhaps the most significant one, and the figure of Gillis the most significant figure. Uh, he, after all, um, uh, took his diploma there, and then became a lecturer, eventually uh, senior lecturer, head of drawing, drawing and painting, uh, and associate with the college right up until his death, 1973. McTaggart also, uh, and, uh, and others. But then you have figures like Robin Philipson, who again um, came to the college just, before, uh, just at the end of the Second World War, and um, and uh, his presence uh, as a sort of acolyte of Gillis's in a way, but as a painter with a very very different um, look, look out upon the world and a very diff different kind of contribution to make, I think, um, change, advance, broaden the Edinburgh School so that the kind of students, the generation of students who were tutored by Gillis. Uh, and then by Philipson, um, are both valid uh, members of the Edinburgh School. But you have to draw a line. And I would say, for example, that someone like John Bellany, who's a great friend, student, significant student of, of Philipson's, is not really an Edinburgh School painter. So there are ingredients in uh, the artists of the Edinburgh School beyond just the characteristic of their having attended. And this is to do with um, the way you look at the world, the way you paint, the way you use paint. I think the example of Gillis, and some like Red Path, of course, didn't tutor at the college, but is a significant member of, of the school. These were influences on people like John Houston, uh, Elizabeth Blackadder, David Meehy, uh, Dennis Peplow, um, who, for me, form the third uh, and perhaps last generation of, of Edinburgh School painters. That's not to say the influence of the Edinburgh School doesn't, doesn't carry on into the next generation, people like you know, Victoria Crow, uh, Barbara Ray and others certainly uh, take something from, uh, uh, from the, gen the Gillis generation and the generation after the, the Philipson generation. So it's, uh, it's, it's a useful term, it's quite a broad term, but it has to have some specific meaning also. And I hope that these, these summaries have helped you understand perhaps something a little bit more about, um, about what is understood by the expression Edinburgh School, so important to the Scottish Gallery um, today as it was during many of these artists' lifetimes when they were represented by us.